I wear short shorts and bras, and the boys love it all. Houston, uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. 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 guys before we get into all the fun and games if you are not at least 18 and over you cannot listen i'm sorry you can't join in our reindeer games reindeer games i'm not i'm never saying a year ever yeah it's about to start getting scary <laughs> yeah yeah it's not even gonna touch it you know if you 18 and <laughs> Lloyd. Anyway, what's up, Lloyd Cousins? Um, welcome to another episode of Houston We Have a Problem podcast. It's your girl, Lloyd, and I'm here with my two friends. I'm using that term loosely for one of them, Raven and Crystal. And um, let's see. Knocking it out the park. Right. So, sorry, I lo- totally lost focus. Yeah, talking shit about me, bitch. My bad, my bad. Yeah. You know, that gets... Okay, if you want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Twitter at T for Tried It. You can email us at Houston We Have a Problem Pod at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook under the Black Astronauts Facebook group. Please go like the Black Astronauts Facebook page. Um, um, then you have Patreon, which is www.patreon.com forward slash Black Astronauts. And Raven will take it from there. So, guys, basically what the Patreon is, it is an opportunity for you guys to contribute to the greatness of the show. You can give it certain levels, and with certain levels comes certain perks. Uh, Anything from 3 to $5, you get a shout-out on the main Black Astronauts podcast show. Uh, $5 and more, you get a shout-out across all the shows, and then access to our BAP archives, which I think is just about caught up. Last time... I checked where Aaron was and the uploading. It was around the time that HWAP started. So, he, by the way, can you guys believe that we've been podcasting for damn near two years? Have we? Yeah, it's almost two years. It's getting close. Like, I know it's it's somewhere around the end of the year. I'm going to have to look again. But we're, uh, the archives are up to the point to when HWAP started coming out and we started appearing on shows. So, um, and I mean, and before that, they had been podcasting for three or four years before us. So it's plenty of... Um, if you know, there's plenty of old shows on there. If you were interested in seeing maybe like what the black astronauts thought about Trayvon Martin or the election of Obama, I think they recorded that too. So, I mean, it's some good old historical <coughs> archives that I think you guys would be really interested in. And then if you owe, uh, donate $10 or more, you get access to our monthly firesides chats and other bonus content. For example, we just did a spoiler review of Thor Ragnarok. Uh, that was just uploaded. We also did a um, we also did a recap of Insecure, and then we are also going to have a couple of new shows coming out. So if you guys want to contribute again, go to www.patreon.com slash black astronauts. And now for those wonderful people who contribute to us, uh, we have V Williams, Monty M, Peter H, Ken H, Pashto, Chene, Felt Five, Robbie R, Deloya, Sadita H, Shalonda W, Wonga, Cameron B, Mr. Brent, C Mo, Ashley G, Chonilla, Knowledge, Dre, The Greatness That Is MJ, Donald, Ophelia Ono, Teddy Funk, Charlie Snowflake, Angela D. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. No, yeah. Yeah, 
whatever. Nikki M, I'll need a penis, Shrad Raxi, <laughs> Shauna E, Ariana, Jordan H, Pam M, Monty M, and Scrum Master Flash. Well, the, the reason why I stumbled is because we have like one document that we keep all of our Patreon uh, people on and Aaron kind of reorganized it and I had it. I just wish people would stop touching things. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, those are our patrons and we appreciate you guys so much. Uh, anything else you want to add, Lloyd, or can I take it from here? Nope, you got it from there. Okay. Uh, well, before we get started into the rest of the show, we got some feedback. Uh, so Yay! This comes again. Shut up. Y'all fucking with us? Like, this is like three shows in a row. I know. I, don't... I feel... This... I'm so emotional about this. Like, this is a lot. Well, we're continuing our conversation with our good uh, cousin, Pam M., and she says, cousins, what's happening? Y'all had me laughing like a fool in my car today. Hey, CY, I always love it when you come to visit. He's not here. And Lloyd, don't worry about Garvey. She's cute and I can get lots of stuff for her. You got to work this cute. You got to work this cuteness when you can. The 13 year old can cook clean when she wants something and talk on the phone. Uh, actually, she'll be on her best behavior when she's away from me. It's when she comes home that she becomes possessed by the demon teenager. Anyway, I agree with Crystal after reading that story about the school that shaved the little girl's head. Girl, I'd been been like Carrie and burnt everybody into an effing crisp. Man, please. See? I work for the courts, but I gladly take those charges. Not only are you going to traumatize a child that has special needs, but not even notify the parents of your intentions, everybody would have caught these hands for show. Insert PSA mm-hmm. here. I do not under any circumstances condone violence or death to anyone. Hashtag wink wink. I know that's right, girl. And Crystal, yep. throw your supervisor in with the whole bunch. Thanks for the birthday shout out, guys. That was sweet. Actually, full disclosure, I was recouping at, during my birthday, so I really couldn't celebrate the way I wanted. But one of my friends took me out to a diner where I enjoyed a lovely brunch. And I don't have a tea for tried it, but I do have a Black Wall Street. You know, I'm actually going to save this part for the actual Black Wall Street because we're just going to go ahead and take the suggestion. So, uh, yeah, do, 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 do. the plan to go to town. Let me, oh, so she said, let me run packing the kids back now. So where are we meeting again? Lloyd love, peace and hair grease, Pam M. <laughs> so Lloyd, baby, you down for that trade or what? Right. Like what are we doing? Like, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Wait, you got to convince my husband. <laughs> I mean, I feel like when she said cook and clean, <laughs> Is somebody blasting off into space? What the fuck was that? It, it ain't me. It ain't me. Lord. My heat is like kicking in. <laughs> this is why I kept moving locations and a lot is going on here. Up here. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, what the fuck? Like, her ass was going to blast off. I've been on my best so it's gonna be nice and toasty in my uh kitchen here shortly my nigga i thought that i didn't know if it was the rapture or what the fuck was going on i ain't never heard nobody's heat sound like nigga like <laughs> N- nigga <laughs> okay let's get into the show first of all uh chris what have you been up to and where can people find you Um, I have been doing the usual, just working and trying to, um, you know, catapult my career, Mm -hmm. get famous Mm -hmm. so I can pretend like I don't know none of you niggas. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. um, Although the way Lloyd's been helping me out lately, I got to claim her. So Mm. um, you can't quit me, nigga. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Working on my writing, um, starting to write again, although it's been shit, but you know, life of a writer, everything you write is trash. And um, that's it. Yeah, just been working, trying to get this money, trying to improve my credit, writing, all that good creative shit. Mm-hmm. And um, you can find me on YouTube as Chrissy Chula, K R I S S Y C H U L A. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook as Chrissy Chula. Uh, you can also find me on uh, Twitter and Tumblr as The Chrissy Chula. Uh, I have my own Patreon page, so if you want to become a patron, um, got great different gifts for people, phone calls, Skype calls, stuff like that. Uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Chrissy Chula. And if you want to email me, you can email me at ask underscore Chrissy at yahoo.com. 
Floyd, what about you? Well, I finally got my wedding dresses, bitches. Yeah. And I if I, I didn't I don't have to switch locations so many times, I would be recording live from the fucking wedding dress. But next show. Next show. I got y'all. I got y'all play cousins. Because as much money I paid for that gown, I'm going to wear it a lot. <laughs> um, I've been doing wedding things. I have been doing my homework. It has been excruciatingly boring. Like, sleep-inducing boring mm-hmm. um and if you want to find me you can find me on twitter and ig at that girl underscore lloyd and if you want to see pictures and videos of my cute ass baby and her half a tooth find her on my snapchat with lloyd underscore banks but don't send us filth thanks and as for me let's see what's been up with me lately um i okay so have you guys ever heard of stitch fix yes so i and this huh I said I'm disappointed. Really? Um, I actually got my first Stitch Fix box today, and it wasn't half bad. It was, like I said, it was my first box. I'm going to see if connecting my Pinterest to it ups the selection a little bit. So basically what Stitch Fix is, it's a service where you pay $20 a month, or you pay $20 however often that you get the box. I um, switched from a monthly subscription to every three months because a bitch is broke. But, um... They send you a box with some clothes in it for you to try. And then if you like the clothes, you can keep it. If you don't like them, you can send them back. And if you do buy clothes, like I think $20 goes towards the $20 that you spend on the box goes towards the purchase. And if you buy everything in the box, uh, you get a 25% off discount along with the $20 off. So um, it's actually pretty decent. I like, like I said, I like the stuff that I, um, that I got on my first first box um especially because it's difficult for me to shop one because i'm really tall so like getting jeans and shit is really hard because there aren't very many tall jeans and then a lot of short people prefer to get tall jeans so that they can wear their he their jeans with heels and consider it bitches and then um you know a lot of times you big man huh super mad like bitch they made these tall jeans for tall people the fuck anyway um i mean that's if they even sell tall jeans like honestly a lot of places don't sell tall jeans and then on top of that i am firmly plus size so that adds another layer to it because people feel like if you have to add an extra two inches of fabric to a shirt it automatically has to become a tent um or it has to be like a thousand dollars so it's difficult for me to shop and a lot of times honestly it can be discouraging like you go you can't find anything your size or everything is ugly or it's it's just a pain in the ass so stitch fit kind of takes that out um on top of the fact that it has some really 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 good quality stuff like i'm not gonna lie some of the stuff they sent me was c like the uh pair of jeans they sent me was like 68 dollars or something like that which if i was at a yikes well see they were really really good quality jeans so i wouldn't mind paying that for a pair of jeans that are going to be good quality but i am at the size i am now i don't plan on being this size for much longer so i feel like 68 dollars on a pair of jeans is a lot i'll just go one down and know old navy and pay a, a cute 25 for right now but you know maybe if there's a point where i get to a size that i want to settle on and I really want to build my wardrobe around being that size I would pay because I do think that there are certain things that you should spend good money on you should have a good pair of jeans you should have a good blazer you should have you know certain stable pieces should be of better quality than forever 21 in my opinion um so hmm? I said agreed yeah I mean it doesn't have to be everything but there should be you I think that there are certain things in your wardrobe that you should have that should be of decent quality and that you should splurge on because I mean they're staples so um I enjoyed my stitch fix unfortunately I'm sending everything back because um like I said uh some of the stuff was like I was thinking that maybe I would get something like maybe 20 or 30 dollars that I would keep but no everything was like the cheapest thing was a 30 dollar necklace so I put it on there like um a little less expensive for favor but um, <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> right. we'll see how that goes i think i'm gonna get another box in december because i switched my membership over to the three months too late uh so i'm gonna get another one in december then i'm not expecting another one until about march but i might move it up because i am going to need something to wear 
around February, I think I have something that I need to go to. And then I have, I'm going to need for them to send me something for Lloyd's wedding. So <laughs> hopefully the stitch fix thing will work out in my favor and I'll have something cute to wear to your wedding. Um, because you can actually put like in the little subscript, the little box, like, oh, I'm going to a wedding in Ohio in April. So, you know, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, outside of that, I really haven't been doing much of anything, uh, you know, doing the things that I usually do, chilling in the house, watching Frasier, crocheting, um, baking, doing my thizzle. And if you want to find me all over the internet, you can find me at this Zeta's a jerk. Now, let's get this last little bit of not quite housekeeping, but this other little segment out of the way before we get into what we want to talk about for the week. Um, the This Week in Black Wall Street, as you guys know, is a section of the show where we give you guys a suggestion for a black owned company or a black owned Facebook page or group or something that you can patronize or you can join and be a part of and show support of. And this, uh, the thing about the this week in black wall street, or these are things that we have bought, we have tested, we, um, or they were given to us, but if they were given to us, we let you know. But basically these are things that we would actually recommend for you. Uh, this time we're actually going to use uh, This Week in Black Wall Street that was suggested to us from our cousin Pam M. She actually put this in her email. So um, we have not tried it. I don't know if Lloyd or Crystal has tried it. We'll find out. But um, if it don't work, hit up Pam M, not us. Um, Let's see. It's called She's Essential 17. It's a great small black owned company that have the most delicious smelling body butters, body scrubs, and they even have some pet products, which is good to know because I do need some stuff for my dog. Uh, What's, it called? Hmm? What's it called again? She's Essential 17. That's S-H-E-E-S. S E N T I A L S one seven dot com. So I need to turn the zoom up on my browser because shit, these letters are small. But uh, she essentials seventeen dot com, and she says that there's even something for the men because they uh, have men's product too. The prices are between five and sixteen dollars, so you can get your butter fill on Crystal. Go to town, girl. Don't tell her that. Don't tell her that. Crystal, close Yay! your browser close the browser <laughs> i didn't know but yeah i'm gonna definitely be on here because my dog has sensitive skin so i need some good pet products for her and then also um it's getting around the holidays time guys so you guys should really start looking into buying you know gifts for your family and friends and at five and sixteen dollars per um five and sixteen dollars a pop like, I guess that can't, you can't really beat that. And I mean, who doesn't appreciate not being ashy and funky? Like, come on. I know, right? It's like the best. You, it lets you know that people, you really care about people. So, um, again, sheessentials17.com. And that is from our cousin Pam M. I am going to click on that website and visit it later when we are not on the show. Anyway. Me too. <clears throat> lies. So, guys, let's get into the show. Let's see. I didn't really pull a whole lot of stuff on what was going on recently because a lot of it was Tyrese, and I refuse to keep up with that story. Um, well, let, let's just hit it real quick since I brought it up because I do kind of have some feelings about it but I, I, I'm just hesitant to really say anything about it because I haven't really researched too far into it because this is just another example of somebody showing their ass on the internet and it's in my opinion starting to look like the signs of a mental breakdown and I don't mm -hmm. want to sit and laugh and joke if that is the case because I've always thought that Tyrese was mentally unstable at, in, in some way, shape, or form. Like, at first I thought he was just dumb. But now he's showing himself, especially, it's the really started with that whole, quote, unquote, well, I would say beef with The Rock, but I feel like beef takes two people. Um, it does. <laughs> it does. That yeah. whole shit with The Rock. So does um does anybody really have, like, a full clue on what's going on before I start kind of scraping together what I know about it? Play cousins come together and pray for Brother Tyrese. That's so, all I got. This is what I got from okay. me perusing Twitter. Uh -huh. So he is ups he is upset. He is in a custody battle with um his uh, his baby mother, mm -hmm. 
and um, apparently she's, I guess she's suing him for full custody. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when he was on, you know, Instagram or wherever he was talking about I already paid thirteen thousand dollars. Like, what more do you want from me? Um, but apparently, um, some detectives on Twitter found out that he was abusive to her and to the child, and so that's why she's in the process of suing for, for full custody to basically get the fuck away from him. Right, and. And um, he's been, and then he had the nerve to whine on Instagram about how he can't see her, how, um, you know, basically painting the baby mother as like really evil. She's, you know, she's keeping me from my child. But as soon as she, they um, approved a uh, supervised visit with her, this nigga left and went to like Latin America with, I think it was Maxwell. It was somebody random that he's cool with. And they told him to uh, that he needs to get away for a while and get himself mentally together. But it's just like you whining online, talking about you can't see your child. And then when somebody allows you to see your child, your ass dips. So you're not helping your case. Um, if I got any of that incorrect, please feel free to correct me. Uh, but that's what I have gathered so far from my um that, my own investigation. I have I, that scraped together. That sounds uh, roughly. That sounds about like what I heard. That's that sounds about what I heard. Um, I also heard. Well, from what I saw, he was claiming that Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith gave him five thousand dollars to ease his financial troubles. No, 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 Five thousand. Oh, my bad. Yeah, no. Five million dollars to ease his financial troubles, according to the Smiths, I'm assuming. They didn't give him any money. Um I don't know. I just it w it was funny at first when he was beefing so called with the rock because it was just like, Okay, nigga, you're tripping. And and it's starting to make a little bit it all kind of is making sense. It's like, okay, he was upset with the rock because they were gonna push back the date for the fast fifteen movie right and so that was going to push back the check which upset him because he needs the money because he has to pay all this child support um uh let's see and then so that made sense to me and then it also made sense to me because from what i'm understanding from listening to the read and then also mary to shade uh shout out to feek and aj i believe that like they were saying that the, a part of the abuse allegation was the fact that he spanked his daughter to the point that she couldn't sit down adequately. Um, so, I mean, which is a whole nother conversation within itself. I don't have children, so I don't feel like I'm in the position to tell people whether they should or shouldn't spank their child. But I, I do feel like if we're going to draw a line, not being able to sit down is a solid line to draw personally. Am I yep, alone? Right. <laughs> like I, I feel no, I, I agree. Um, and my whole thing is why would you just whine on the internet talk about how broke you are and you getting money from people and then quit the Fast and Furious movie well, that's money because he's he's not that smart we can say that and then I think I don't know because what makes him because the same thing that 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 same question falls into the vein of why do you think that the Fast and Furious franchise would pick you over the rock exactly and so there's not a lot of logic there which makes me think that there is a psychological problem with him and i just i've i've been trying to be personally a little bit more understanding when it comes to certain things um because i understand that mental health is a real thing and i understand that people deal with things in certain ways and things that we used to think were funny and just this nigga's tripping right might really be like somebody spiraling the fuck out of control so but nigga what are you doing just, what, are you, what doing? are you doing what are you doing see, the thing see the thing that prevents me from thinking that this might be a mental issue is that tyrese has been like this for a while now he acts out he says stupid shit and he does stupid things i think he's just stupid hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think well. it's i don't think it's a mental health issue i just just think he that's who the fuck I mean, he is. Can we not jack. classify stupid as an incurable disease? No. I mean Ron for Tyrese. What's his I name? Mean, for Tyrese is gone. <laughs> like I think we can give up on that. Ron like that's White, a sinking ship. Ron White said you can't fix stupid. 
So I'm, I mean, I don't know. I, I just, it's, it's one of those things to me where I'm trying to be a more sensitive and understanding person because I'm pretty sure that whenever I have my mental breakdown, I would hope that people would be understanding, you know? Like I mean, it, yeah, and <laughs> and of course, like if I don't know if if it looked to me like a mental breakdown, then because I've seen people who've had mental breakdowns and that shit's not funny at all. It's scary sometimes, mm-hmm. and and other times it can be really, really fucking sad. But this shit, I just he's just being stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 what I'm chalking it up to because I've I've seen people who've had mental breakdowns and it doesn't manifest itself in the same way. True. But this shit don't look to me like no damn mental breakdown. Yeah. Well, who knows? Um, speaking of people, I'm, I'm trying to think back to stories that are kind of a little bit in the past, but I was still kind of wanted to discuss with you guys. Um, Chrisette Michelle, speaking of people who I'm not too sure about anymore. Uh, uh, I was hoping we wouldn't have to discuss her. Uh, are we going to have to talk about her? At first, I didn't want to talk about her, which, by the way, guys, I'm just going to issue a quick trigger warning right now where we are going to discuss uh, miscarriages. So if you don't want to talk about that, fast forward maybe five minutes. I don't think it'll take that long, about two, three to five minutes. Um, so Chris at Michelle, as we know, roughly around this time, no, around January, but roughly around this uh, around this couple weeks ago she uh got on instagram and twitter and started doing something very strange um she started posting like black which i I, sometimes i don't really understand why people do this but like they'll post a image on instagram that'll be text and then write a story under the text like yep girl this is clearly for a facebook status but whatever um she posted she posted a couple of them one was they dropped me another one was yoga saved my life and then another one was i had a miscarriage i think those were the three that i remember seeing but basically it was her writing these stories about like over i guess the last year or so since she received a ton of black backlash from um performing at the inauguration and failing completely at life uh the things that have happened in her life over that year and the things were that she um was dropped by her record label she had a miscarriage allegedly and um she started doing yoga and like she was having some conflict about being a christian and a yogi because what the fuck ever girl that was stupid i don't whatever anyway i'm not gonna <laughs> anyway <laughs> let's let focus so she uh she writes these and um she reaches out to whichever part of mary mary also open her big goofy ass mouth to talk about her voting for big, trump dumb goofy ass mouth like just, bitch we would have just never known <sighs> you, you, silence Are we still is, talking about- silence is free anyway and so she so the thing that I wanted to talk about was because at first I did kind of feel bad for her because I feel like it's one of those things for me where it's like you thought that you thought you had a good idea but it was a terrible idea and instead of backing down when it was a bad idea you treated the people who were telling you it was a bad idea like shit for telling you that it was a bad idea. Because remember, when she was going, when we found out that she was performing at the inauguration, she didn't do what, uh, what's her name? Jennifer, not the person who sang the end I'm telling you before Jennifer Hudson, Jennifer Lou, what? Snow. Yeah, don't don't ask me, girl. Well, y'all Google and let me know. But um, she found out that they uh, that people were upset with her performing at the inauguration. She was like, oh, my bad, girl. Thought it was a good idea, but it's not. I'm not going to do it. Thank you. Bye. And, you know, dipped out. Um, you know what? <laughs> she was like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't, I don't need these problems. I like my bills being paid. Thank you very much. Um, so she 
So she, when this whole thing came out that she was performing at the inauguration and people were talking like, no, it's a horrible idea. It's a stupid idea. You shouldn't do it. It's a bad idea. She turned around and was like, oh, you niggas need to be thankful that I'm performing because I'm going to be a bridge and da 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 da. Basically pulling the Steve Harvey. I'm going to be the bridge. I'm going to shake hands with the president. I'm going to be the person who talks to him. And basically you got played, you got paid, played for what I can assume be a palsy amount of money because your record label dropped you. I'm pretty sure that you're not selling heavy and just no girl. <laughs> it was a no. So I, at first I kind of felt a little bad for, her, especially with the whole miscarriage thing, because miscarriages are upsetting, especially when you were like looking forward to having a child. And she posted a picture of a miscarriage online. And then it turned out that that picture was of somebody else's. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. When did that girl? So what? she went on the Breakfast Club, right? And was talking, which she went on to the Breakfast Club, and she was basically on there defending the reason for why she put it on there. And she was basically like, "I put pictures of my pictures up there. That's not me all the time. Like, look on this. This picture is clearly not me. It's I don't know who it was. I don't think it was like." nina simone or somebody you know like that's clearly not me that's nina simone and like, girl like, that's clearly not the same thing like that's a weak gas argument you could have did better stop like just just stop and just no what, what, what the fuck is going on with people oh so she tried to say that i post pictures all the time of everybody except for this one time where i tried to make it seem like this was a picture of my miscarriage I mean, and even if it's not, I tried to make it look like it's a picture of my Chris. Bitch, what the fuck is, why did you post a picture of somebody else's miscarriage online? Exactly. Like, why would you do that? That is somebody else's pain that they, and then what pisses me off even more, because I'm scrolling down this goofy nigga's Instagram right now, is she's sitting here and she's posting all of these pictures of strong black woman and Erica Badu and Whoopi Goldberg and Indy Ire and Lauren Hill and just, but, but my thing is, is like, all of these people told you not to fucking go and perform well, maybe not uh, Tina Campbell or whatever fuck her name is. But like all of these people were people who were telling you why it would be a bad idea for you to pre- perform for Trump. And you basically treated everybody like they wasn't shit because they was trying to tell you. And now you want to turn back and be like, no, but these strong black women, girl, boo. Like, get the fuck. Get off. Of- she had the nerve to, I don't know, to report this picture of Beyonce. Don't fucking put Beyonce's face on here. Leave her alone. Right. Don't talk to her. I want. Can I block her? Let me block her. Ooh, Chris, I'm doing Ooh, Chris it. Michelle. Yeah, I want to block her because I can't. I just. I really can't, and I don't think I should have to. Uh, um. We, does this mean we gonna start talking about the other Mary and Mary Mary? I don't listen. I don't know. Th- was this the one who husband cheated on her, or was it the other one? It was. It was the one who got cheated on. Mm. You know, so she has a track record for giving any shit ass man. You know what? Let me not say that. Let me not. Tina, girl, we didn't have to know. That's all I'm going to say. You, no one asked you to tell us, girl. And you oh, could have rolled time. over in your grave with that, that secret, girl. Girl, li- okay. I'm going to piss y'all off with this. So I, I'm on Chris at Michelle's Instagram because I wanted to see what she put oh. under Tina Campbell's uh, caption. Shh. Thank you. Let, let, let me start. Christians, Buddhists, and Muslims all have different philosophy. Philosophy. We're still all one people. Democrats and Republicans usually never agree, but we can disagree without division. Tina, you've lifted so many hearts, shared your personal story to let women know they aren't alone in their struggles and obstacles. You've come through a bumpy relationship and showed, not bumpy girl, a bumpy relationship and showed us what forgiveness truly looks like. You are not alone. While hot water surrounds any political choice, I know you followed your convictions. You've thought that from your Christian perspective, sticking to your roots was the way. While I don't support Trump, and she put that in quotes like this nigga isn't a real person. I support your cry of love over the years. Your music has brought me closer to the father and healed my heart at the same time you sang. I stepped on stage to sing before a crowd I didn't agree with, having the intention to heal, unify, and be a voice. We can disagree without dividing. We can love each other without different views and perspectives. We can tear each other down when people don't say we want them to. It's so- 
my nigga. You're right, Heater. Less enough. So, <laughs> I just the, the the her posting, finding out that the picture that she posted was somebody else's miscarriage, and then her going on and trying to defend it on the Breakfast Club. You know, but the funniest thing about that whole uh, thing was while she's sitting there talking to Angela Yee, uh, Charlemagne pulled out some lotion and gave her some because her hands were ashy. Oh. So, y'all, y'all just well, just put them on the sick and shut in list. That's all I'm gonna ask you for. I mean, but God, you know, babies and fools, so they might be all right. Let's see. Let Let's move on to some new and dope news. Uh, Miss Peru. There was a contestant to uh find Miss Peru. And at some point in the uh, competition, apparently you're supposed to go up, say your name, where you're from, and give your body measurements, which is weird. But, I mean, you know, pageants is not exactly the most progressive thing in the world. And if people want to participate, that's their business. But this time, the uh, competitors, instead of going up and giving their body measurements, came up and gave statistics about violence against women in Peru. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that that was super dope, especially because, I mean, it's, I don't know, I don't know offhand the facts and stats and stuff about America, but I really respect the fact that these women are taking the opportunity to do what they, it's, they're doing what they love to do and what they enjoy doing, while also bringing social awareness in a way that I don't think that many pageants do nowadays. Um, there's been a couple of times that I've caught a few pageants just, you know, to see the beautiful gowns and, uh, you know, to check out who's, you know, the black women, see who's bad, what country I'm rooting for. And a lot of times whenever they ask them questions, they're supposed to give like a politically correct, correct question. I think, uh, somebody like Miss USA or something they asked her about Trump and she basically was like fuck that nigga I don't know but I just thought that, that was super dope hello I'm here I'm waiting for my hater to stop worrying <laughs> trying to keep myself mute we appreciate it and, and uh, yeah I don't have much to say to that are you guys into pageants by any chance? I've done pageants. Oh, what pageants? Yeah, that scholarship money. Well, mine was through a local black-owned organization. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you did the typical three rounds, um, like formal wear, swimwear. Um, what was the third one? Like... Well, in that case, the last pageant I did was just whatever you wanted for your third one. So a lot of people did like ethnic wear or whatever. Nothing to write home about, you know. Just did you? I placed runner up. No, I did place. It's nice. Oh, you were Coco Montrese. But my friend actually won. So. Oh, she really was Coco Montrese. My scholarship money, my loss, and my scholarship money, and moved on with my life. Did you hear me, Crystal? What? She was a Coco Montrese without the drama. You know what? <laughs> don't, do, don't don't do Lloyd like and that. And much better makeup, if I do say so myself. Look how don't, orange you look, girl. Look how orange don't you do look. Lloyd like that, Lloyd. I am terribly sorry. Once you ever get around to watching Drag Race, you will get that reference. Yeah, I did that specifically to piss because she has no idea what we're talking about. Well, maybe she would be more of a Raven. I'd give you right. Oh, well, because... um, speaking of drag race, um, all stars three is coming out and I'm super excited. Are you ready, Chris? Yes, I am. Who are you rooting for? Um, I feel like me and Kennedy are friends now, so I don't want to say the wrong person. Um, no, go ahead. Be honest with our fans i'm rooting honestly i'm rooting for shangela <laughs> i just want her to win everything i feel like okay so 
for the people who know or don't know, RuPaul's Drag Race is a drag race competition. It's the uh, so-called Olympics of drag. And every few years they have an all-star season. And this season, there are a bunch of, of course, returning queens who were all-stars on their season. And um, it would be way too much to get into to really try and explain it deeply. I don't want to lose you guys because it's RuPaul's Drag Race is a lifestyle. It's a world. It's a thing. Um, it is. I would it's have, a commitment. It is. And if you are interested in getting into RuPaul's Drag Race, I would strongly suggest that you skip this all-star season. Uh, go back and watch season nine and what other, uh, what other seasons are available to watch online or wherever you can find them. I, um, If you want to know, hit me up, email us. I can send you a couple links to some places that you can watch if you are interested in that type of thing. Anyway. I would say for me, I am hoping that either Shangela wins or I'm kind of hoping that Trixie wins, but I feel like Trixie, I have an unpopular opinion about Trixie Mattel. I love Trixie, but when I watched season seven, I didn't see what everybody else saw in her. I was real. I really became a fan of Trixie after season seven. She was one of those queens that I really, really, really started to like after the show. And your opinion about season seven doesn't count because. Okay, well, here's the thing. Even though I didn't like, I this is the thing. When I first watched season seven, overall, I was kind of meh about the whole thing. But the thing was that everybody was like, Trixie's hilarious. Trixie is awesome. Oh my god, Trixie! But I really didn't see a lot of it, and I don't know if it just didn't come out, or if she was eliminated too soon, or if there was she didn't have the opportunity to flex that. Like I do know that she wasn't there for that award show, and that's probably where it would have shown the best. But. I didn't really see that in her on the season. And so I do like her now and I do want her to win, but I don't know if, I don't know if she's going to be able to pull it. You know what I mean? Especially because if she did, if it didn't show on her season when she was on originally, unless she's come and reformulated the way that she works the show this time, I don't know if it's going to show. I mean, because think about Shangela. Shangela didn't make it past. She, she, I don't think Shangela's ever did snatch game. Did she? Um, did she do Snatch Game on season three? I don't remember. I don't know if Angel's ever made it to Snatch Game, and Snatch Game is one of like those pivotal episodes where that's like it starts to get good. But I don't even think that she's she's not a queen that's made it very far, but she's by far one of the most popular queens that's come off of the show. Um, and then you think about people like Kennedy Davenport and Chi Chi Devane, which all I just want is a, a battle between the two of them. Like somebody owes me. Okay, <laughs> somebody I, owes me. I would, I would be thoroughly entertained by that. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm rooting for if, if Chi Chi wins, I'll be very, very happy. I'm I, rooting, so I take that back. I'm rooting for Shangela, and I'm, and I'm hoping Chi Chi. I'm rooting for everyone Chi-Chi, who's black. Me too. Um, <laughs> or to Issa Rae. <laughs> what are you saying? I just, I think Chi Chi deserves a lot more than what she's been given. I, so. I think that I like Chi Chi, but I don't know if the show believes in her. Like, I feel like they don't believe in her the way that they should. Or like, because on her season, I felt like, I mean, this is going to be the last over. Then we're going to wrap it up. Sorry, guys. Um, I feel like Chi Chi on <laughs> her season. This is all Raven's fault. It is. I'm sorry. Um, I feel like on Chi Chi season, they didn't expect for her to go as far as she did. And they weren't expecting for her to be as good as she was. And so I don't know if she's going to be one of those people. I mean, and all stars has just been full of shit. These Latin, these, these first three seasons of all stars always been something. And it's always seemed kind of rigged, especially all stars too. We won't get into it. Crystal, hold your, hold yourself. Um, like, How do like, you get to say your, your shit and then you tell her to hold right. her? Well, because you don't Since understand. You, Crystal, is, you need to Crystal, say Crystal is about to fly off into a rage. So. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm controlled now. Thank you very much. Uh, are you? I am. I am very controlled just now. I'm just. Awesome. I was going to say, actually, mm. Mm. that. <clears throat> my focus is going to be on Chi Chi. Okay. Thank you very much. Listen, because I, I, um, I thought that she was about to, I thought she was about to go off. But these last couple of seasons, these first two seasons of All Stars have been a little sus, especially that second one. It was super sus. So I just. Rigged! 
<laughs> so I just I don't know I just don't know if they have it in the bag for Chi Chi because they didn't seem to have it in the bag for her in her season and I don't think that they believe in her so well but but you have to remember now now, how long ago was Chi Chi's season? Two, and she's been working, ago. she's been booking. Gigs. And she's got money. I mean, she got money now. So her her only, the thing that was holding her back in her season was that she didn't have enough money and she didn't have enough to work, work with. And so that was hitting her confidence. But now she got more money. She booking gigs. She's on All Stars. She's going to be okay. All right. Well, guys, that was our quick rundown of Drag Race. So... You'll, be, you'll probably have to hear a little bit more of that as the show comes on, but I don't think it's due until January. So you guys got some time to catch up and, you know, join the winning team, Lloyd. Anyway, <laughs> in our last little bit of news, me. I will take my time. You can take your time. You ain't seen Reclaiming nothing. Reclaiming my time. You don't have it. You have, how are you going to reclaim time? You ain't spent it on nothing, nigga. Right. Asshole. Claiming my time. Um, in our last little bit of news, Rihanna is going to be hosting next year's Met Gala, and the theme is going to be yes. Heavenly Bodies, Fashion, and the Catholic Imagination. Oh my God. Yes. That's going to offend so many Christians, and I can't wait. I would come in like a nun habit in the front and like ass out, like completely naked in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Fuck it. <laughs> Why Live your not? best life. Why not? I'm super excited. I'm not really in, I'm not a fashiony fashion person even though I watch Project Runway. Um which anybody else either one of y'all watching Project Runway? No, mm. but I heard one of the the people that used to be on the show died. Michael Knight died and I'm so hurt. Oh, anyway. Um, well, I'm not a fashiony fashion type person, but I do like to look at the outfits at the Met Gala because I am into beautiful gowns. Um, and I mean, I mostly, everybody pretty much comes to see what Beyonce is going to wear, what Jennifer Lopez is going to wear and what Rihanna's going to wear. Fair. And, and so, uh, this year, actually we're going to, Rihanna's going to, I think be there early since she's hosting the Met Gala. So she should be like one of the first looks that we get. Uh, Beyonce always comes fashionly. Beyonce comes fashionly late, so we'll get to see what she's wearing. Um, I'm interested in seeing what Solange is gonna wear. I do look forward to Solange's outfits, even though I will be completely honest that sometimes I don't always get it. Um, yeah, she she's you know Solange is like Solange is like uh seven years woke more than everybody else. Like she's she's been there. She's already in the future. So we are just gonna have to catch up, but we can. You yeah. got to open your third eye, my sister. And you know, yes. the thing that I like about Solange is that I feel like her style is just different enough that it's not too much. You know, like whenever I see her dress and it's like, eh, I don't get this one, but I'll get something. You know, and then there's some people that you're just like, you know what? Look, bitch, somebody is going to have to talk me into believing this is fashion because I don't I don't think this is fashion. You Doesn't. just described everything that Bjork has ever worn. Pretty much. So, yeah, yeah um, I'm excited to see that. I'm definitely excited to see what people uh, wear. Which, guys, by the way, if you want a recommendation for a new show, if you have Amazon Prime, you should watch the show. It's called The Collection. And it's basically about drama in, like, this Paris fashion house as they try and make Paris, like, the center of the fashion world again after... Uh, New York takes it over and I mean again beautiful gowns like it's just it's beautiful Um, it seems very dramatic I've only gotten through like the first two episodes because it's one of those TV shows that you can't really put in the background you have to sit and watch it I don't have a lot of time to sit and watch TV but I would love for you guys to write in and let me know if you enjoy the show it's mostly I'm not gonna say it's just a chick thing but if you were into beautiful gowns and expensive things (sighs) And please, way. please stop trying to force your religion on us. I'm not <laughs> trying to force my religion on you guys, but one of my favorite genres of TV is a uh, vindictive and salacious white people, and this is a vindictive, salacious white people with beautiful, expensive gowns. Fair. I watch. I like to watch Jersey Shore because they're a hot mess. Girl, Fair. I, you know what? I need a good old trashy reality TV show to get into, but I need, but I need, is that even on? It's coming back. Yeah. 
What's coming back? With the Jersey same Shore people? Yeah. They have... No, thank you. I'm not interested. Something else, please. Anybody else? They're having, they're <laughs> no having, a, they're having a reunion. No, thanks. Season. I'm good. No, thank you. No, no, no. no. You, you got it, bro. You got it. Well, okay, because, like, I want to get into love and hip-hop, but I'm past the point where I can't even watch that show anymore. Like, it's just, it's so blatantly fake for me that I can't, I can't. even, I can't. I can't even do it. Um, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't participate in hood rat shows. I can't. I'm over my life. I'm over the Real Housewives of Atlanta. That last season was pretty good, but now it's just foolishness and arguing about nothing. Like they used to have some type of drama in the background, but now Kenya's fake married, and I'm not interested. Um, they're like it's a no for you, dog. It's it's gonna be a no for me, big dog. Um. I'm trying to think of what else people have been suggesting to me. Project Runway is on its way out. They're uh, headed towards Fashion Week, so the finale is about to be over. Um, you know what show I really miss, and it only lasted for I think two seasons, was that? Naomi, Naomi Campbell show The Face. Listen, I live for Naomi Campbell as horrible of a person as she is, and as much as she will be a, a servant's ass, she was hilarious. That was a <laughs> Naomi Listen. Campbell is hilarious. First, of and it all. was better. It was better than like the past six seasons of America's Next Top Model. The past thirty-two seasons, America's. Don't get me started on America's Next Top Model. America's Next Top Model has definitely given us some funny moments in reality TV history. But overall, I never felt like America's Next Top Model really was trying to find America's Next Top Model because they would openly. Like, I always felt like Tyra's whole thing was always this whole, anybody can be beautiful. Everyone is beautiful. He would just pick whoever, whether they were the best or not. And it was bullshit. And I was like, ugh, I'm over it. And plus, I feel like Tyra Banks is a little bit of a sociopath. Like, I remember watching her TV show. And I remember there was one specific episode where they were, like, doing this whole thing about, like, discrimination. And she put on this fat suit for a day. And yeah. was like went on and was like, you know, living in the world as a fat person, even though clearly you have the hands and you look like fucking Tyra Banks, but whatever. Um, and she's like on there crying about how hard it was to be fat in front of somebody who lives that every day. And she's like, if people were just so mean, she would just always make everything about herself and stress me out. But um, yeah, well, the model, she's very narcissistic. I mean, I'm just saying she like, does that all the time. You could be sitting there talking about your mom and like, yeah, I'm just struggling right now because my mom, mom has got cancer. And then she'll butt in to go, you know what? I understand that because one time my mom went on vacation for two weeks and I couldn't talk to her. And it was like, she like was bitch. <laughs> the fact that that's pretty dead on accurate is hilarious. Like, yeah. bitch, what? See, but the funny thing about Naomi no. Campbell is that Naomi Campbell's narcissism plays out in a completely different way. Her narcissism plays out not necessarily into let's make it about me, but it's just like there's an overlying air of you bitch, you could never be me. As long yeah. as we're on the same page of bitch, you can never and will never, we're, we're good. <laughs> in the moment yeah, that you think that you might be able can't. to, bitch, I will remind you that you can't. <laughs> I just Naomi Naomi Campbell's Naomi Campbell's is backed by a lot of power. Like you know she's tall and she's skinny, but you just got a feeling she probably will whoop your ass. Or she'll try. Or she definitely will try. Or she'll get somebody who can. And you just got to deal with it. Like I feel like and Naomi Campbell, when you talk to her, you look her in the eye. If you piss her off, she'll push a button and the floor will disappear under you. And you'll like yeah. fall down and shoot. I just I love that. You so, basically just call her Isma. Yeah, basically, I was. Yeah, Naomi Campbell is just. Um, I would say her her narcissism is smarter. It's more intelligent, if that makes sense. And it's more valid, mm, yes, it bitch. You could never. I feel yeah. like I feel like Hers Naomi Naomi Campbell's narcissism is more expensive than Tyra Banks. <laughs> that I, I'll agree with that as well. It's just more, it's something about it is just, is more expensive. And also, so just to touch on, I don't think it's necessarily narcissism with Naomi Campbell. I think it's more confidence. No, it's narcissism. It's, it's just, definitely narcissism. I, okay. Definitely I don't narcissism. appreciate you talking about my mom. 
I don't like that. But Listen, that's fine. but the thing is, is that because the other thing about that I love about Naomi Campbell is the fact that okay, I have a slight obsession with people. Ooh, hmm. Well, I understand people who think that they are better Naomi, than other people. What's that? Sorry, somebody <laughs> sent me a snap. Um, I understand that she was not ready for people. It. Stop with the random dick pics, y'all. No, no one wants that. I mean, I Thanks. do, but not right now. Let me see. Who is this? Oh, very well could be one. Um, the thing I like about I under I like people who have a lot of confidence in themselves, and I like people who think that they are better than other people because I feel like people people have made humility into such a virtue, but they don't realize that they want you to be humble because it makes them more comfortable. So people who don't fall into that, yeah, I appreciate. And I mean, like, and not just in a way of like a Kanye West, because I'm all for somebody being able to talk their shit. I don't necessarily think that they should force it upon you. Like, if you don't think they can't Naomi Campbell's all that, first of all, don't say that to her face. But, you know, like, you you don't (laughs) bet you you won't. I bet you won't. But like people like I just don't agree with people who it's like you have to also agree that I'm be- I think that I'm better than you. Like I can think it all I want because that's my prerogative. But I feel like I I've never been big on people telling people like oh you need to relax and you need to not feel yourself so much. And I just love Naomi Campbell for that. With her whole thing is bitch I'm the shit. What the fuck are you gonna do about I, it? I am the Naomi Campbell. Um, did you not know? Well, that's because she is the shit, though. Like, I don't want nobody... Like, like, to it's even yeah, better when nobody... you can back it up. Yeah, I don't like niggas who just think they the shit and they live in a cardboard box and you bought your damn Michael Kors purse from the swap meet. I don't... Nah. Naomi Campbell is living that's in that her Is that where I be What swap meet y'all going to? Hmm. <laughs> Girl, because this show as hell ain't in Houston, Texas. So I'll tell you that. Whew, I've been to some of them swap pe- meets and um, mm-mm, sis. <sighs> it's anyway, enough. It, it's a no for me. And the thing, ugh, we, this is going to be the most random show. The thing that's the most upsetting about swap meets and like trying to thrift and stuff when I'm down here in Texas is that the area that I am live that I live in is a highly, uh, con- a high concentration of Hispanic people. And stereotypically, and also statistically, because I live here, y'all don't, Hispanic people are very small. Fun fact, I am not. So <laughs> when I go thrifting, I'm just like, these clothes, I already need like tall clothes or I already need like plus size clothes. These are some of the smallest clothes I've ever seen. And so like, I'm just like, I don't, I don't even know where I can go really thrift and get anything because this isn't the demographic that this area is ser- uh, serving. So I don't know. But all of that to say, guys. All that to say, guys, if you ha- guys have a suggestion for a good um, reality TV show, I prefer competition shows, but if you got a good reality TV show that you want me to watch, I'll be happy to oblige because I need something to do. That was a long-ass conversation. That was a lot. Oh, and then another thing. Um, at some point, guys, we are going to start recap. We're going to go back and recap um, Flavor of Love and I Love New York. So please... Uh-huh be on the lookout for that uh, that's gonna be so much fun things i'm here for that <laughs> that and this mm-hmm. okay guys has anybody tried you um no one has tried me personally thank god um but i'm just gonna get give a small tea to people who just can't take accountability for their own actions chrisette mm-hmm. michelle and tina whatever fuck your name is like, if you fuck up, it's okay to admit that you fucked up. It's okay. We're all human and we're all going to fuck up. What's annoying is when you fuck up, you fuck up in my face and you get called out on your fuck up, you get mad. Like, right. Especially in the case of Team Campbell. Like, we really just did not need to know it all, girl. Like, we did not need to know. Like, we didn't. Absolutely. And just when I was getting ready to take her son, Michelle back, like, I was getting ready to be like, you know what? Maybe I could forgive you. You just keep talking. Like, you suffer from the Tyrese syndrome. And I'm going into space now. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Is it a wind-up type of eater? Like, what do you have Like, to- do you have to go and run on the treadmill a little bit to get it going? And then, like... 
Right. Like, what are we doing? She got here? Garvey and a hamster wheel running the heat in the house. <laughs> That's why that baby be so Fuck hot. both y'all. <laughs> baby be. <sighs> it sounds like an automatic rewind on a cassette tape. <laughs> it really does. It Nick, definitely does. It is the most aggressive heater I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> What about you, Crystal Girl? <laughs> oh, my tea for tried it is uh, just happened this evening. So before Lord. I came over here, I went to Kroger. Kroger. And I had to handle some uh, customer service business. Mm-hmm. I get to the damn customer service desk and there's nobody there. Hmm. I stand there for a few minutes. I go, hello, hello. Nobody answers. So I walk over to a cashier and I say, hey, listen, is anybody here at the money services, customer care? Like, what's going on? Now, keep in mind, it's 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. What time is it supposed this to doesn't close? doesn't close until 10. What you say? I was going to ask you, what time is it supposed to close? It's supposed to close at 10 p.m. Now, this was 8. 8 p.m. I walk over to the cashier and I said, hello, Um, so is somebody going to, you know, is somebody over there? Like, what's going on? She goes, oh, I think it's closed. Yeah, it's closed. Bitch! And there's no signs up whatsoever indicating, hey, we closed two hours fucking early. Nothing. There was nothing there that indicated it was closed. The lights weren't off. Everything was up and operational. So, what? What? And there was no fucking notification. That's what we're doing now? Is that, that's what, that's how we run businesses? What if I, I had something important to do? So, you know what? That's that. I'm them. I'm let me. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna let it alone. Okay. I'm just that. That shit is ignorant. Put a fucking sign up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. As for me, my tea for tried it um, is gonna go to people who are reaching out to other people to. Not necessarily make a well if you're making amends or you're just reaching out because there was something. Well, let me tell my story. Long story short, a while ago there was a situation. Um, there was a situation that happened between me and a person that didn't end well. It was years and years and years ago, like five years ago. Hasn't really been that big of a deal. Uh, I mean, it was a big deal back then. Over time, I've just completely not given a fuck about it. I don't know how they feel about it because we haven't really spoken like that. Um, in that time, we've had other interactions that have, again, proven to me that we're just not that that, it's not even like one person's a bad person or one person's a good person. It's just that our personalities do not mesh. And that that's more than fine with me. I don't have to be friends with anybody. You know, if we don't work out, then we just don't work out. I'm not a person who's good to be friends with people who are extremely sensitive or extremely emotional. I have low emotional intelligence um just not good at it it's it's just who i am (laughs) it's who i am as a person i'm sorry like i'm not sorry i'm honestly not sorry like it's just who i am as a person it's not my strength i don't know what to tell you and so um we had our a little falling out or something like that Uh, i guess recently somebody and we were uh talking it was us like a big group chat text or whatever and something had happened to a close friend of them where somebody, one of their, I think their significant other had a friend who died or something like that. And so they get into this group and they're like, you know, I just want to tell you guys that I love you. You know, they're doing that emotional thing that people do whenever somebody dies in their family or their, you know, something like that. And then at one point, like in this message, in the same message, it's like in Raven, I know that we haven't spoken in a long time, but you know, I don't know. I was hoping that we can get it back on track and all this other stuff, blah, 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 whatever like that. Here's my thing. First of all, e. if you want to talk to me mm-hmm. and you want to solve a personal issue with me, mm-hmm. talk to me alone. Wow. Oh, this is a word. Let me. Like, wow. Because all it comes across to, to me as you trying to make a public show of you wanting to you're trying to make a public show of oh i want to reach out to you but then you Mm -hmm. didn't make any real effort to so what are we supposed to hash this out in front of everybody 
Mm-hmm. I mean, now granted, this situation, it wasn't a situation where it was like, oh, I would have felt uncomfortable hashing it out in front of everybody. But at the same time, like if you have, if you really want to work something out with somebody, and you really want to get to the root of the issue, then that's something that you guys should do in private. Not something that you should do in front of everyone else. Thank you. Come on. Now, Tell I mean, because the other thing is, is that you're setting yourself up to be embarrassed because if I was the bitch I was five years ago, I would have said in that same group chat that I'm not interested in rectifying anything with you. Mm-hmm. But this is a new and improved Raven. And I'm trying to work on my emotional intelligence in some way, mm. shape, or form. Just a little, not a lot. I mean, you know, being a callous bitch is part of my charm. Yeah. You know, I do, I do what I can. Like, I can do what I can where I can. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm making uh-huh. improvements where I can make them. But... You know, like if you're going to apologize, you you need if you're going to apologize to somebody and you really want to work out something, then it's best that you come to them privately because then it comes off as disingenuous in that you just want for people to see that you're reaching out. It would be it was this. It reminds me of kind of the situation where on Real Housewives where Kenya and Nini had an issue. And so Kenya decided to throw this um, throw this like big old gala or whatever so-called in honor of nini knowing that nini wasn't messing with her said that she invited nini and that nini didn't get back to her but you were still trying to throw the gala even though the so-called person of honor may or may not have been there so then nini got there and when she you know got tried to you know kenya like low-key cornered her into giving a speech and nini did not handle that situation well i do know how to handle those type of situations a little bit better but overall i understood nini's sentiment you know i don't like you don't try and or you know that we have an unresolved issue don't try and hash it out in public to try and make yourself look like a good person and don't try and hash it out in public because you don't know what's going to be said you don't know what's going to be done and you might end up playing yourself well kenya's a fake ass bitch so all the yeah that that was just it was an example i don't even watch the show and i know that girl i don't watch the show and i always know what's going on but that that's just my tea for tried it to the people who are out here that are so-called trying to make amends with people if you really want to try and solve something with somebody that's not something that you should do in public that's something that you should do in private because it it just it's it doesn't come off as genuine I mean, it's the same thing as where you fuck up is where you apologize. If you drag me on Twitter, apologize on Twitter. If we have a real life issue between the two of us that happened between the two of us in the middle of the group text is not the place to do it while you're in the middle of expressing your love for everyone. And the only reason why you're here is because you had some revelation because somebody else died. Sure, whatever. But no. Mm Mm-mm. So, yeah, bitch, you tried it. <sighs> anyway, guys. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We almost forgot our yes, bitch. I want to give a gigantic yes, bitch, to Cardi B. Since the last time yes. that we recorded, she has gotten engaged. I just. Eternal yes, bitch, at this point. Like, 2017 is hers. 2017 she is she got, a rolling, she got the cover of Rolling Stone. As well. Like, oh. she's just been. Just a quick rundown of Cardi's 2017. I'm going to start with late 2016 in the sense that she quit loving hip hop, uh, got signed to a record deal, had a number one, um, had a number, her um, single hit number one without any features, which was the second uh, female rap artist to do so. Uh, She's also had uh, two popular features, a uh, name of motorsport and then also no no limit and um no just he no limit. Right. Motorsport. motorsport and no limit even though i don't think that motorsport was that great but that's just me um she had two big features she's touring and selling god all over the country and she got engaged and now she's on the cover of rolling stone it's the year of cardi yep proud of her so yeah, I've never been more happy for someone that I didn't know in my entire life besides Beyonce. Like, it's just an excellent year. It's it's actually the year of the black girl when you think about it. Cardi B's having a great year. Rihanna's having a great year. Uh, SZA's having a great year. Mm-hmm. Issa Rae's having a great year. It's just an amazing year to be black and to be female. So, yes, bitch, to all of y'all, but especially to Cardi because she deserves it. So, guys, we appreciate you for listening. 
we're happy that you sat here for another hour and listened to us talk about a bunch of nothing and a bunch of something at the same time. Thanks again, Pam M for emailing us. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to send feedback, which we highly encourage you to do, um, send it to Houston. We have a problem pod at gmail.com. We actually might be editing the uh, email address soon. We will let you guys know what it is on the next episode. But as of right now, Houston, we have a problem pod at gmail.com is the place to get in contact with this. You can also tweet us at T for tried it. Um, you can go to the black astronauts podcast, Facebook page and uh, like the page and then go over, find the group, add yourself to the group, see us talk and share articles and all types of stuff. Um, also, what else? Um, oh, if you want to become a Patreon, www, if you want to become a patron, go to Patreon, www.patreon.com slash Black Astronauts Pod. No, just Black Astronauts. Yeah, www.com slash. Fuck. Yeah, fuck this. Jesus, you know where we at. Um, <laughs> girl, I'm over here trying to read text messages and talk at the same time. This is my fault. <gasps> So uh, oh. become a patron so that you can get that good old content. If you guys missed last um, last month for October's Fireside Chat, we told our worst breakup stories. Um, somebody got bit. Somebody broke up with somebody at a funeral. Just niggas ain't shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It, it's getting real. At a funeral. At Red. a funeral. At my mom's funeral. So, Damn. Yeah, the, fire, the Fireside yeah, you know Chats. What? Yep. Yep. The fireside chats are a lot of fun. So um, if you guys are missing out on that, you're um, missing out on all the other bonus content that we have, and you guys are missing out on a lot of fun. If you want to find me, Ray, you can find me all over the internet at This Zeta's A Jerk. If you're trying to find me, it can be found on Twitter and IG at that girl underscore Lloyd. And if you're trying to find Garvey, it should be on my Snapchat on the Lloyd underscore Banks, but don't send us Phil. Please. Crystal. I'm just thinking about being dumped at a funeral. Like, you see that corpse? That ain't the only thing that's dead. No. So is our relationship. Bitch. <laughs> Basically. I want to find you to get the fuck off. Like, log off. Okay, guys. Thanks for listening and have a um, great no, week. bitch. Thank you. Anyways, uh, bitch, you. Oh, bitch. Look. Listen. Anyways. Um, you can find me on YouTube and on Instagram as Chrissy Chula and also Twitter Tumblr um, as the Chrissy Chula and uh, my Patreon page is patreon.com forward slash Chrissy Chula and uh, you can email me at ask underscore Chrissy at yahoo.com and also um, I wanted to add my own yes bitch to Andrea Jenkins who is the first openly transgender woman black uh, transgender woman of color elected to uh, an official political office. She was yes. elected to Minneapolis City's uh, Council. Yes, bitch. Listen, so we're, I think her. that they're going to get into um, more of the election results on the BAP. Hi, Garvey. Um, on the BAP show. But uh, yeah, shout out to her. You that bitch. <laughs> you that bitch. So... Thanks, you guys, for listening, and we will catch y'all in, what, two weeks? Bye. Bye. Bye.